Let me tr introduce you guys to my friend Omar. That's him sleeping on my couch. And maybe you can't tell from this picture, or maybe you can, but Omar is an entrepreneur. Uh, he actually has a small computer repair service that he runs, and with the money he earns there, he supports himself and his grandparents who he lives with. Omar is also... Um, so that's Valentine's Day. He actually hacked on my Facebook and changed my profile picture to this. Still not quite sure I did it, but. And Omar lives in San Pedro Sula, which is the most dangerous city on earth. Just by virtue of living there in Honduras, Omar has a 13% chance of being murdered at some point in his life. What if you had a worse than one in 10 chance of being murdered? That would mean eight of the people in this room here today would one day be violently killed. Can you even imagine? Unfortunately, Honduras is only the most extreme example of the violence in Central America. In fact, outside of war zones, seven of the eight most violent countries in the, on, on the earth lie between Colombia and the US. It's this violence that compels me to talk to you today about perhaps an unlikely topic for me, the legalization and regulation of all illicit drugs. Not just marijuana, but also cocaine and heroin and others. Now to start on this topic, we have to first start by acknowledging that here in the US, the war on drugs has failed. We've imprisoned over 300,000 people here in the US, but consumption has remained unchanged for the past two decades. And drugs are widely available. Teenagers report that they can find hard drugs in under 45 minutes. And prices are dropping. The price of heroin is only a quarter of what it was two decades ago. Here in the US, the war on drugs has failed. But in Central America, it's still raging on. Only there, the cartels are winning. I first became aware of this violence shortly after I moved to Honduras to work with the nonprofit TechnoServe. Not too long after I arrived there, four people were gunned down on a soccer field right next to my favorite lunch spot. Sometimes our, often, our office receptionist, Carolina, would leave work early to go take care of her brother's daughter because he'd been murdered just a few years before. While I was still living in San Pedro, just 100 miles north of me, a gang raided a remote farm and murdered and beheaded 27 innocent farm workers. Later that same year, Mexican authorities exhumed the bodies of 193 victims from mass graves. A gang had stopped public buses, pulled off the passengers, and then forced them to fight each other to the death for the opportunity to work for the gangs. These gangs operate with growing impunity and are tearing Central America apart. Violent gangs, illegal drugs, governments powerless to do anything about it. This description applies perfectly to Honduras of today, but it could just as easily have been pulled from Chicago or Detroit in the 1920s. Congress had banned the sale and manufacture of alcohol, but demand hadn't changed. And so the mob stepped in to fill the void. They imported illegal drugs and liquors from Canada into the US and they used the proceeds to buy guns, politicians, and to strengthen their operations. As the bodies started to pile up, Congress began to realize that this wasn't working, that the experiment had failed. So after 10 years, they voted to repeal prohibition. Cut off from their source of funds, the mob began to shrivel up. They couldn't buy guns anymore or politicians. <coughs> they went out of business. People still drank and got drunk, but they weren't drinking industrial alcohols or bathtub gins. They weren't worried about blood poisoning or, or blindness. We ended the days of mobsters and moonshine. We learned our lesson. Now it's time to apply the lesson that we learned then to today and end the war on drugs. I think we need to legalize and regulate illicit drugs here in the US. 
Now, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that drugs don't do harm and don't hurt people, because they do. But that's even more reason to regulate and control them strictly. And to illustrate my point, let me ask you a question. If someone that you loved had a drug problem and you found out, would your first call be to the police or to your doctor? Now, I know this sounds like a bit of a radical idea. It's kind of scary. But it's actually already in practice in Portugal. Just a decade ago, Portugal decided that they couldn't win this war, and they decriminalized all illicit drugs. Ten years on, demand has not increased. In fact, cocaine use among teenagers has actually declined. And this measure now enjoys wide support from both the public and law enforcement. Now, Portugal can't go all the way and legalize drugs because that would put them in conflict with the UN Single Convention on Narcotic Drugs, a convention of which the US is the primary and chief enforcer. So for that reason, a serious conversation on drug legalization can only start here in the US. Now let me take you back to Omar in Honduras for just a second. Omar lives in a country where the cartels are winning. He lives in a world that was created by the US, but one that most of us can't even imagine, one that's characterized by violence. One night, I was clearing out some emails from my inbox when Omar sent me a chat. He was lying on the floor of his bedroom underneath his bed while gunshots rang out outside his window. Another night, Omar had gone, and I had gone out to a bar just to play some pool, have a few drinks. Omar had a gun put against his head in the bathroom by two drug dealers, just for fun. What's going on in Central America right now is a tragedy. But it's a tragedy that we can end. You can end this tragedy. I think that those you here in this room today will be the leaders of tomorrow. You're going to lead organizations, join governments, influence others. You're going to have an outsized impact in this world. And so I'm asking you to use your intelligence and passion so the next time the conversation of drug violence or marijuana legalization comes up, I want you to think about what we talked about just over these past few minutes. I want you to think about Omar and the violence that he faces every day. And I want you to argue for drug legalization and regulation here so that we can help make the US and Central America a safer place. Thank you. <laughs>